All right, so we're gonna. St- I'm so excited for this talk tonight, guys. I really am. I wanted to do this conversation when we launched, relaunched 20 plus, and Britt talked me out of it because she said it might be too much for the first night. So I'm like, all right, but I'm so excited for tonight. So first question for everybody here: Who? Show of hands. Who got the talk from their parents growing up? Did anyone got you got the man? Did, not many people got the talk, huh? Y'all gonna learn tonight. Okay. All right. You you all just were like, what did we sign up for today? But, so, what was what was your talk like, wife? Oh, it, it's not worth talking about. It wasn't worth talking. It was about? an extremely conservative household, so it's just weird. Okay. Fair enough. Do you, I mean, some people might have that. You want to share it? No. Okay, no, fair enough. No, it's just really weird. Uh, mine happened in first grade because I said the word sex, and my mom went, oh, you need to talk to him. So my dad talked to me, and then I almost had a second talk when my dad looked into my closet when I was about 16, and he saw a duffel bag of magazines. Don't get ahead of me. And he sat down on my bed, and he goes, Ken, we need to have a talk. And what is that? And I go over to my closet, and I'm like, oh, my bag of gaming magazines? And he goes, oh, you're not horny. You're just a nerd. All right, so, um, so he, got, he just left that one, so I didn't get a second talk. Um, but so those of you who didn't get a talk growing up, don't worry. We got a special treat for you tonight. We invited the parents of the house to come give us a talk. So why don't we welcome up Pastor Marco and Lindsay. Did you get the talk, Pastor? You know, I never got the talk. Um, I grew up in a Cape Verdean home where you just got to figure things out on your own. <laughs> or your boys will help you figure it out. So I never got the talk. Did you get the talk? So I did get a bit of a talk. Um, it was the night before we got married. and <laughs> That's when you got the talk? That's when I got the talk, yep. Yep. And... It was like, it was awkward, but then not at the same time because my, I was just like in the living room and my dad was in there and we were just, I don't know, I think we were watching a basketball game and I'm probably like folding laundry and he was like, you know, here's what you can expect. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> super nervous but my dad is so like he's so chill and so nice and so approachable that it didn't I didn't feel like weird I was just like oh I wasn't expecting this at this moment from you <laughs> like um, but then he was just like it's a beautiful thing and he you know I waited till till to get married to have sex and he knew that so I think that it was more like for him it was like a celebration like hey I don't want you to go into this blinded but like this is a beautiful thing but you know it might feel uncomfortable at first and I was like all right thanks dad and I was like uh okay (laughs) do we keep talking or like this is where it stops can we be done (laughs) but it was fine (laughs) so were you nervous before he talked with you about like because you didn't know what to expect or did your did you have like um no, I don't think I was. I think um, because of our relationship and our friendship, I felt like, I don't know, I just trusted him. And I was like, well, whatever happens is going to happen. Like, it can't be, like, it's going to be fun. Like, it's going to be fine, you know? Really funny story, right? So in, over the summer, I decided, okay, I'm going to have my first talk with my son, right? So we usually hang out in my basement. We like sports. We're watching a soccer game and I was like well in my head I'm like you know soccer game's on this breaks the ice we can just talk so I'm starting to have the talk and I can tell like he's nervous <laughs> I'm nervous too <laughs> you know it's my first like dad like moment <laughs> of, of the talk and crazy thing happens during the soccer game I'm having the talk we're in the middle of it a guy collapses and has a heart attack on the field during the soccer game. It was so intense. He, the guy literally died for a few minutes on the soccer field. So in that moment, I'm like, this has to be the most scarring thing in his life. <laughs> he will never forget this talk. 
Like, like a sex talk. Someone's having a heart attack. <laughs> like, what well, do I I'm pay like, attention to? I don't know yeah. what to look at right now. So right. I, I just told him, I said, just go upstairs. Because I'm like, <laughs> this is not going to go well. So he will never forget his first talk. You know? <laughs> and all day long, I was like, so what happened? What happened? Because he told me, he was like, oh, we're going to talk. I, like, I had the talk with him. And I was like, he didn't tell me he was going to do it. He just, like, just went for it. And I was I just like, like, oh, my gosh. It's a good moment. You didn't tell me. You didn't consult me. Yeah. What are we doing? What, what did you say? What happened? And, like, all day. And then he actually left to go do something. And I'm texting him. I was like, you're going to come back and tell me what happened? <laughs> yeah, what happened is the guy who got a heart attack. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's what happened. <laughs> on a soccer field. And that's how the talk went. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's so important that we're having this talk because... It's weird for, it, church has made, has let sex get weird and the topic of sex to get weird. Um, and I was really inspired originally by Mike DiOrio because he was the first person that really made sex less weird for me, where he really like owned it and was like, no, I'm going to go home to go have sex with my wife, bye. I'm like, oh, okay, just drop that on me. How old were you when he told you that? <laughs> I think I was in my early 20s. Yeah, okay. Because okay. okay. I, I feel like knowing Mike, Mike is a guy from our church in Smithfield. I'm like, were you, were you, was he like a youth leader at this point? And you're like 14 and he's like, I'm going home to have sex with my wife. <laughs> Well, I saw him weaponize it, too, because there'd be leaders in Smithfield being like, Mike, we need you to stay and do this. He's like, no, I'm going home and I'm having sex. And they wouldn't say anything. They'd just be like, okay, bye, see you, Mike. Yeah, what do you say to that? <laughs> um, but I loved that spirit of being like, no, sex shouldn't be weird. It's something that should be celebrated between a husband and a wife because it is something that is blessed by God. So, um, so with that, you guys want to start with just let's def redefine sex here for some people who maybe have had sex defined by the world? Yeah, the first mention of it is in Genesis, right? Right from the beginning, when, when God created Adam and Eve, right? God clearly said, like, listen, it's not good for man to be alone. We're going to create a suitable helper, right? And the two will become one. That's a sexual reference, right? The first reference in it is that the two will become one. Like, God ordained this thing. So it's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing, right? But with anything that God creates, there's a purpose yeah. right behind it. And with anything that is created with an intention and a purpose to it, um, it could be taken out of context as well. And that, that, that's when I think it becomes, it gets weird and it gets, you know, awkward. Because I think we, most of the times we talk about it out of context, yeah. as, a, as opposed to be in context of, you know, a, a, a male and a female coming together by the blessing of God to fulfill this calling because it is marriage is a calling you know if you don't approach marriage as a calling you're already losing you know and so that's a beautiful thing like it's God ordained from the beginning you know and the fact that they were uh, again there's a beautiful play on words if you look at the original uh, when Adam first saw Eve Adam said finally right flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones. And what he was saying is finally like someone that I can relate with, connect with, because he was surrounded just by animals at that point. And some theologians believe that Adam was probably in the garden for many, many, many years, which is like, thank God that he created Eve, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so, but the beautiful play of words there, the flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones in the original is now I have someone who, my weakness is covered by a strength and my, my strength will cover her weaknesses, you know. So it's a powerful thing that God created for us to fully enjoy and be blessed by. It. Yeah. It's like the greatest, I think it's the greatest pleasure God created for us. But yeah. That in gaming, according to you. <laughs> <laughs> that That's was my accurate. way to stay celibate. That's Did God accurate. create gaming? <laughs> Do you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I, I think I was just thinking, you know, I think some of the some of the issue comes from when we have we've let the world define it because the world has been so loud about it and so vocal about it and it's always feelings oriented. So sometimes when we have these conversations, if you're new to faith or you, you know, you have had sex outside of marriage or you know, whatever the case may be, it can feel a little bit like like this is a rule or a regulation or like you're suppressing my feelings and like, right. but this is my truth and like this whole thing. But 
you have to, that's why you have to go back to scripture and kind of go backwards and say, okay, but wait, what was actually the original intent and the original purpose of it? It was never meant to be feelings driven. It was supposed to be in, um, it was supposed to be in addition to a commitment and a pleasure that's connected to a commitment, not a pleasure connected to nothing. Okay. So I think that um, I think that that is kind of you almost have to you have to give yourself that time to kind of step back and really like look at what it is that we're really talking about, you know? Yeah, if you think about it, right? With with every other relationship that we have, uh, that's the only thing that makes marriage sacred, right? right? Uh, you don't sleep with your best friend unless your best friend is your spouse, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's amazing that, that God says, man, like, this is so potent and so powerful that it's reserved for this one and only relationship. Mm. And that's the thing that actually binds that relationship yeah. together, right? Like if, if you go to court, a divorce court, they'll ask the question, was this marriage consummated? Mm. Right? In other words, did you guys become one? Yep. Right. So in other words, when you have sex with someone, you're becoming one with that person. And that's why a lot of times when people take it out of context, there's a lot of damage to it yeah. because you didn't realize that you just you just created a bond with someone that you're not married to. But now you're taking on everything that is them, because there are such things as soul ties. Mm -hmm. There are such things as exchange of like spirituality in things that people are carrying yep. when you become one with someone. That's yep. why it's such a, it has such crazy repercussion right. that people don't realize. And a lot of times, because of our lack of spiritual understanding, we don't realize a lot of this issue that comes with it afterwards, like the depression, yeah. the, the, uh, the confusion, the identity, all of that stems from the reality that, hey, you just became one with someone. Yeah. You know, minus the actual covenant of it. Right. Yeah. I, and I think it's um, amazing how science has caught up to that with just the brain chemistry and everything that goes on and the dopamine releases that is meant to attract you more to your spouse so that when she kisses you and when she touches you that those synapses start firing because it's like, yeah. oh, it's go time. <laughs> and, you know, getting, your, getting yourself revved up. But when you're, you're abusing it, well, now you've messed up that brain chemistry and it doesn't know anymore. Like, should I, when... Or it takes more to get that chemistry going and those synapses firing. Yeah, so if you think about that, right, that's pretty powerful because that's the same thing that happens with any type of addiction, mm. right? What happens to your body afterwards, your body starts to crave things out of context, you know? So, a, like, a drug addict, an alcoholic, a sex addict, all they have the same yep. thing. It's the same exact issue. That's why nowadays... Uh, Sex addiction is, a, is treated the same way that drug addiction or alcohol addiction is treated because of the science, because of how, what the effects it has on your brain. It actually distorts your brain. I read a powerful article on Time magazine, not even a spiritual magazine, a secular magazine, where they interview a lot of men who have struggled with pornography, mm -hmm. and they say that if you do the, the research, it has really changed the yeah. landscape of your brain. Yep. Wow. That now these men don't even know what intimacy looks like yeah. or feels like I actually talked to a man who told me that he said I was a sex addict I had no idea what the word intimacy even even meant wow. not realizing that the very thing you're looking for becomes distorted yep yeah. 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 Um, I just want to just take a moment just to like set the tone to like this conversation that we're having it applies to all of us so like if you're single if you're dating if you're engaged or if you're married like there are um, truths within this that are relevant to where we are in life. So I know some of us um, are also single parents in, in this room. So like take what the Holy Spirit's trying to drop in us and use it for um, victory in your life during this time. Because we're going to talk on some heavy things and we're going to talk about like our current sexual climate right now what's going on in our culture um, and how to navigate some of that. What are some red flags? What are some triggers even in ourselves that we can start to identify and then we now are aware so we can walk in this equipped and know how to um, live a blessed life, live a life that is anointed by God and not one that is run by the culture of our day. So, are you ready? 
All right, so. We oh, we have, haven't even studied it? <laughs> we're going to really get into it. That was now. the warm up. <laughs> the warm up. Um, so, the second part that we want to talk about is just the current sex climate in our culture right now. Um, and one that we see is really full of abuse and misrepresentation. Um, and we just wanted to know how you guys would suggest maybe navigating the culture and the media um, portrayal of it. I mean, as far as media goes, I am like a big advocate of just no social media just because it's like, it's so hard. Like even when you are just on social, it's like you can just scroll and it's like ads pop up. And I mean, you if you stay on that ad for like two seconds, it changes the algorithm. And it's like, it's like it's crazy how much it's just trying to pump it in your system. Yeah. So that's really, that's like, you, you really have to look at some of these things and cause we can get into like the deep things of your soul, but then there's a lot of things that are just happening on the peripheral and like on the yeah. surface rather that we are not paying attention to because we're so desensitized by it. Like it is no big deal to be watching a game with the kids and a Victoria's Secret commer commercial yep. to come on or yep. a condom commercial to come on or you like, and, it's so awkward, yeah. like, or even like tampon commercials, and it's like, what the heck? Like, what do I tell my son right now? It's like, I, it's so weird. Yeah. And what's scary is that this is going to be very normal for them, yep. and that's frightening as a parent, yep. parenting teens. So I think that there's you you have to have almost a moment of like kind of shutting everything down. At least for me, that's how I would start, like just shutting everything down. And almost like going on like a almost like a media fast because then you it will start when you do put it back on you'll start to see like oh my gosh this yeah. stuff is everywhere yeah. there is no hiding yeah. from it yeah. um, so I think that there especially for some of us that like just haven't have never been aware of it and yeah. like you know have never you're new to faith and like your spirit has now turned on your spirit is now now awakened prior to that you were asleep and mm. it none of this mattered it was like right. no sex is a feeling sex is just this it's just that but when you're awakened yeah you have to you almost have to say okay god i awaken me in every area of my life yeah. um and so that would probably be the place that i would almost start with it um because then you can start to tailor your worlds a little bit better to protect yourself and yep. to protect your eyes and pro yep. to protect your heart because it is such a sacred it's such a sacred act and yeah. if you don't re if you don't recognize it as a sacred act even that is a is a signal like all right yep. wait a minute why don't i recognize this as a sacred act what have i led in my life where do i have to backtrack right. and kind of figure out what is it that i'm desensitized right. to you know what i mean yeah that's good I think there's a clear pattern and connecting point to why we're struggling so much with mental health. Mm. You know, I think we live in a over-sexualized society. The, re the sad reality is this, the very thing we, we want is intimacy, mm. and that's the last thing we're finding, mm. yeah. is intimacy. And because we're putting ourselves out there trying to find that, we're losing ourselves right. more and more, you know, and we're actually losing the essence of the very thing we want, you know, right. intimacy. If you break that down into me, you see, right? And we're craving attention, we're craving approval, we're craving all that. It's like, so to what extent do I have to go to get these things? Right. Again, go back to the dopamine. It's it's what social media is. It's driven by dopamine. Like every yeah. like, you know, something flashes, it goes off, and unfortunately, it's like, man, that you're settling for the plastic version. Mm -hmm. of the real thing yep. yeah. you know what I mean and, and that's what saddens me because you know in my time <laughs> you had to go to a store to buy a, to buy a Playboy magazine yep. <laughs> now it's like you just have your phone and it's just yeah. everything is right there yeah. you know, and we were never meant to live like this yeah. with this thing in our hands all the time right. always scrolling always looking yeah. and desensitizing the very thing Jesus said your eyes are the windows to your soul Mm. So think about that, right? If your eyes are the windows to your soul, so what are you putting in to your soul right. every day? Right. You know, with no filters. Yep. You know, yeah. which, you know, pun intended on filters. <laughs> 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 you know, nowadays. Because it's like yeah. we spend 30, 40 minutes trying to find the right filter. Not realizing, no, you actually, you got the wrong filter right. going on. And I, and, I, and I hope you understand. I'm not just talking about the, the act of sex. No, it's the sexualizing everything. Yes. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I hear people say, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's like, yeah, but what are you doing right? 
Right. We always look the defensive thing. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not having sex. It's like, yeah, but you're, you're over-sexualized and you don't even know it. Like, your mind is so, you that know, so distorted right. that you don't, Jesus said, like, like, you don't have to have sex to be sexualized. Right. right. I think another part, too, that I want to kind of touch on, especially for women, is I love a good rom-com. Like, I'm all about it. I love the happy ending. Like, Pitched. do not put on... Yes, love the movie. Like, don't put on a movie that has a unresolved ending. I don't need that because that's our life. Like, and that's why I, we never watch movies together. Yeah, like... <laughs> I'm like, give me the most hardcore, like... Yeah. No happy ending. This is no. life in your face. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah. No. That's not. I feel like we so already. So we never watch movies together. I feel like we already have that in regular life. So if I'm watching a movie as an escape, yeah. like give me a happy ending. But anyway, I'm saying that to say, as women, um, you know, a lot of us like we love love and we want that happy ending and we want that guy to really see us for who we are and to really connect with us and to look into our eyes and to see our soul and all those things that we really, really desire. What's interesting though is that in this culture everything is microwave like yep. quick. Yep. You scroll like on TikTok, you a whole meal is made in forty five seconds. And I, yeah, I, I yeah. and I, I know that it's like it's it's fun and it's like, oh yeah, this is really nice. Like I, I learned this meal, but I really, really, really believe that it is lending itself to this like I need this to happen right now. Like I didn't have like this guy this thing didn't pan out with this guy or or so um, this person didn't see me or it's yep. not happening fast yep. enough. And then we rush and we yep. rush and then we give ourselves away too easily. And I think that the guy needs to really fight for you. Like, I yep. think that you yep. should be pursued. Like, I know that like we're in a feminist culture and I totally get that and respect that because I'm a woman, I'm educated, I own a home, I have a car. Like, I get it. I'm all about it. But we also have to recognize like, as a people of God, like we are called to be different. And I yep. think that there's something really beautiful about just being patient and waiting yes. and wait for the right person. But while you're waiting, it's waiting as an active, yes. it's active. It's yep. not waiting like, yep. oh, I'm just going to do nothing and hopefully he'll just come. Like well, while you're in the waiting, like, yeah, go buy a house. Like, yeah, go get your education. Yes. Like yeah. you don't have to wait for anybody yep. to do any of those things. But it is, there's, it's a long, it's the long game. And we yep. sometimes don't want the long game. We want it to happen right now and yeah. we want everything to be the way that we want and it's going to be perfect. And that's just not realistic. That's what so I would good. always say to Britt in that regard where when I was pursuing her and her friends, I'd be like, listen, she is a top shelf woman and she's not lowering her standards. So I've got to work to get up to reach her. Yeah. And like, and I would, you know, say that I was like, yeah, there are so many women in the church who are just like putting themselves on that lower shelf so that it's easier for the guy that they like to reach them. And it's like, no, keep yourself up there. Make him come up. I th if anything, I think that, like you were talking about the feminism aspect of it, it's like, I feel like that's more empowering that you value sure. yourself oh, to yeah. say, I'm worth more than you're giving me credit Absolutely. for. Absolutely. And think about it, like a, a serious <laughs> dude wants a challenge. Yeah. Like it's the jokers that you're going to <laughs> you're gonna attract, but a serious dude wants the challenge, right? Like I'm telling you right now, like as a dude, like when the more a girl puts her out there, the more you you're, you're turned off, because you're like, there's no challenge there, right? God created us to pursue, right? And if there's no challenge there, it's just like you're bored, you become bored, and you you move on, right? And that's why like for any young girl that's like, hey, let me put on you know my best bikini and show myself, it's like no, the real dudes. I'm just going to be like, nah. That's the jokers, good. though, they're liking that post multiple times. Come on. <laughs> DMing left and right. Yeah, you know what I mean? So to me, it's like, it's a sad thing. Like, when I see, when I, again, I've been on social media for over a year. Best decision ever, you know? But it's like, I used to see that as a father. It used to break my heart to see a lot of young girls just, like, putting themselves out there. It's like, no real dude will take you seriously, but the jokers will. Yeah. Um. Man, that was good. I was And I want to actually add to that. There can be there are jokers in the church too. So I like I don't want us to think that like no, no, no. oh the joker this is, is outside yeah. of the church. No. Like listen, I The yeah. devil comes to church. Yeah, like I've been I mean I I do I do hop on social and I see like some of these guys liking some of these pictures and these guys are in the church. And so they there is I I want to be sure that we're understanding something. Every person has a deep well in them, right? Every person does. 
but if you are not, as a person, if you're not accessing that deep well and you're doing everything on a superficial and you're liking these dumb posts and you're making these joker moves and like these girls are doing this shady stuff and putting themselves out there, I'm not saying you don't have a deep well. I'm saying that you're at, you're not accessing your deep well. That's good. That's what I, that's what I think that that's we have good. to talk about because these guys that are like, oh no, but he's in the church. Like, yeah, and? Like, and, yeah. Marco and I went back and forth when we were dating for a while and I like, half broke up with him wait I stood him up a few times because I just wasn't sure and I was like I, I'm not sure and I'm not gonna yeah. just give my heart away yep if I'm not sure and I felt like I wasn't totally confident in myself and in my decision and I didn't want to drag him along for the ride and so I mean standing him up probably wasn't the best idea <laughs> I was but I was say. also 20 so that's that but he we're here now so like <laughs> There was that level of like, no, like this is worth it. Like I want, yeah. this is what I, this is what I want for both from both of our parts. So I, I'm saying that to say like, you don't have to. Every guy that asks you on a date does not deserve a yes. Like you don't have to say yes That's every time. Good. You can say no. You can say yeah. I don't really know. That's what I did. I was like, he asked me out, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. And then he was like, hey, I bought his tickets, and I was like, sure. And then he called me. He's like, hey, where are you? I was like, oh, I'm driving home. <laughs> like left the school like I was like because I wasn't amazing. sure super shady of me but the intent was more about like I felt like I needed to know I need to be confident in my decision and I think that as women we need to be confident in our decisions and you can say no to yeah. a date like it's so, not a big I have deal. a question yeah we might have a little levity the tickets that you bought was that your first date um, no, it didn't no. happen. She, she no. didn't. I know the one that she stood you up on was she that. I'm trying that to remember. It was supposed to be Monsters Inc. on Ice. Yeah. Wow, that's why she stood you up. That, that, that was. That's what it was. But we had been you like, know. we were like off and on for because we okay so. We were really good friends for a I couple of the tickets, years. Made money. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. We were really really good friends for a couple of years. So like. When I was going through a breakup and he was going through a breakup, like we were kind of just, we would talk to each other. He was very encouraging of me and it was completely platonic. It was, everything was above board. Like I wasn't attracted to him. He wasn't attracted to me, but we just really like, it was a genuine That's love awesome. for one another. And it was like, I felt like, man, this guy like really gets me. Like he might be the best friend that I've ever had, but it was so innocent and so genuine. Yeah that when we did start to become attracted to one another and we were seeing like, man, our lives really align in a lot of different ways because he was in ministry, I was in school for ministry and that was what we wanted to do with our life. When we started seeing, wow, all these things are aligning, it kind of was, it was weird to kind of go from like, man, this is like my best friend, like literally my best friend yep. and am I attracted to him? I'm not sure. And so there yeah. was, so we had a, as I want to say like five or six months where it was just like, we were just kind of off and on, like just yeah. trying off and on, I was off and on. He was solid. He was like, nope, this is what I want. But I was the one that was kind of up and down. You know, can I, can I share a little bit about my story? Because I want to talk to the dudes for a second. You know, I got saved. I was 20 years old. I, got, I was radically saved. Uh, and this is something that, unfortunately, I don't see a lot nowadays. But I had a serious fear of God. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Like, I felt strongly that God said to me, if you're going to be a man of God, I, I want you to be pure all the way. Mm -hmm. One of the first scriptures I memorized is Ephesians 3, 5. It says, among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. I was sexually active before I got saved. Yeah. But the moment I got saved, I took that so seriously. I never had sex again until we got married. When we, when we got married seven years later. Wow. I got married 27. So I want to say that because I believe that God will bless your life Amen. if you honor him yeah. and take his principles seriously yeah. I, I you know? also just want to hop on that for a second because our culture the normal the normalization of it is that we have slept around and i want you guys to know that there is grace in that but you have to meet jesus where that grace is um he's offering that to you guys freely um it doesn't matter if you've slept with more than one person, it doesn't matter if you have children from it, it doesn't matter any of those things. Like God meets you in our mess. It doesn't matter what our mess is. Um, I think that we, we hype up this sexual immorality and the sexual sins so highly, but then we forget about the gossip sins and the sins behind closed doors or the more obvious ones. And your God sees a mess as a mess. 
It doesn't give us an excuse to continue in that mess, but he wants you to know that he still loves you exactly where you're at and he's going to help you in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. so in that, right, I was so convicted when the Holy Spirit has to convict you. Mm. Yeah, this is not like judgment, condemnation, yeah. shame. This is no true conviction yeah. of, do you understand the power of seducing people? And it broke me to the point that it was so serious that I wanted to be a man of God. This is before we had, you know, text and cell phones and all that. I wrote letters to girls that I was uh, involved with, apologizing, wow. repenting. Wow. Even went to some of them and they were like, what the heck are you talking about? They had no <laughs> but I felt so convicted yeah. by it that this sex was never meant to be used just to get what you want, yeah. right? And God began to reveal to me, like, that's someone's daughter. That's someone's yep, future yep. wife, you know. That's good. And now as a father, man, I get that on a whole other level, yeah. you know, that I pray that we don't have jokers in this church yep. who don't value others, yeah. right? And I tell people all the time, like, don't waste another human being's life yeah. and their potential yep. if you're not serious. That's good. On the side for the girls, don't act and dress in a way that is going to address the jokers. You are better than that. So please help them out. If you want that man in your life, then act that way. Walk in that. You can do it. It doesn't matter what all your friends are doing. Don't walk around as a billboard saying, pick me. That You're not going to be picked. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying, I know, like, don't, you jump on me if I say this wrong. You can be, <laughs> and not in a good way, but you can be more conservative in your dressing, not concerned that the guy won't find you. Because if the guy's truly interested in who you are, they'll like, he'll identify what you have of true value, and then you get to show him what you're working with. Yeah. But, but, the whole, but the whole thing about, <laughs> listen, listen. The, the, After you're married, that's what I was getting at, no? Listen, the, the, this whole thing about like finding the right person is so overrated. Yeah. Like, it's so overrated, especially when it comes to church in, in, in this journey. Like, we, we put so much pressure, so much fear on the one yep. that, to me, it's not godly. It's not a god. Like, you don't find that in scriptures. That's right. You know what I mean? You don't find that in scriptures. In scriptures, what you find is, is a journey. And on this journey, you might meet potential people, right, that you might be compatible with. The word actually that, that God uses for Adam and Eve is compatibility. It's like an ideal, suitable helper. Not perfect, not the one. That's so good. You know what I mean? So, so it's important to take the pressure off of that, right? Is she the one? Yes, I'm married to her. She's yep. the one. I am now the one. <laughs> you know? I have arrived. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, are there, are there such things as soulmates? Yes, once you guys have done the work yeah. and become soulmates. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, because I think we put way too much pressure on that. Oh, hey, this is my soulmate. I felt something. Wait, maybe you had bad pizza. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, we have to take the pressure off of that. I think there's a lot of mumbo jumbo in the Christian realm with the stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kiss dating goodbye, all that nonsense. Um, I think you really have to do the work where I believe this with all my heart. If you're working on being the one, you will recognize a, a potential one. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not doing work on yourself, yeah. They won't recognize you, yeah, you won't recognize think, them. Absolutely. And I think that there's something that's so powerful about solitude and singleness. And we like we say it like it's a cuss word, like, oh I'm not married yet, or I'm not like I don't have any kids yet. Like, okay, that's fine. Like that's babysit someone's married kids. Yeah, and that's not that's not the end all be all as someone that is married and has five kids. Like I feel like I'm still on a journey of identity and who am I really? Like they if anything like real talk if anything I feel like I have to do more work now to like recognize who I am and what my identity in Christ is outside of outside of Marco outside of my kids yeah. because right now everyone knows me as Pastor Marco's wife and that's become my identity and so sometimes we have this like idea like oh when I find him yeah. or when I have the kids like I'll have arrived no that's not true um and it's it's really it really is like a really um like stupid way of thinking because it's just not it's not realistic but there's something that is so beautiful about solitude and about singleness that I think that if when we embrace it you really see the beauty in it um one of the things that had happened with us is when we were <clears throat> we had dated other people and we were both in this kind of season of just 
being single and yeah. recovering and and I don't know just figuring out who we are after a breakup breakups are tough you know yeah. and we were both in that and there was a lot of like I was by myself a ton and I would journal a lot and I was like god like I need I need you ultimately in my life and I didn't necessarily feel it but I knew like yeah. if I don't submit if I don't get, if I don't submit this to God, like this yeah. is going to rule me. This yep. is my emotions are going to yep. rule. And so there was a season of that. And, you know, some seasons last longer than others. But the point is, is that every season that you're in, you embrace it until God moves you out of it. And until a new season comes, you make the best of every season yeah. that you're in. Like even as a new mom, like that's really hard. But, yeah. but you make the best of it. You don't yeah. curse it. Yeah. Like don't curse your season. Yeah. Bless your season. Yes do the best with your season god what do you want from what do you what are you doing and at this point right. in my life right. and 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 listen to the like listen to the holy spirit like yep. where yep. where yeah. do you want me to be right now but that's now, why you know? that's why rom coms are so toxic come on <laughs> don't fight on our couch you fight at home <laughs> because because what they're doing is like you like let's be real like you watch and you're single and you just start to fall in love with an imaginary person yeah. That's not even there. Yep. Because, yeah, I guess that's true. Right? Because, <laughs> but I'm already married, so I feel like I'm kind of No, 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 safe. but hear me, hear me on this, though. I think, I think that's detrimental just because yeah. what it does is it just creates these, like, unrealistic, Yeah. you know what I mean, yep. idea of what this actually looks like. Yeah. That this 16 years of marriage is work. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot of work yeah. to be intentional about mm. really growing, mm. right? And a single person, man, the greatest gift is that you get to know yourself. Right. And there's no pressure to put on, oh, yeah. you know, because what do we do? Like the norm, the moment someone declares that there's feelings, pressure's on. Yep. Now you're not yourself. Yep. You know what I mean? Now you're not yep. fully like saying the things you would normally say. Yeah. You're like, take a girl on a date. She doesn't eat. Now it's like, I don't even know if I can afford you in the future because... <laughs> You're that not even is, eating. All right, you know, but, but hear me out. Hitch is the perfect rom-com because it's about guys who are out of their class, going above and reaching for... Yeah, except for the fact that that dude would never get that girl. <laughs> Ever. That's the whole point. <laughs> Ever. You know what I mean? Oh Unrealistic God. expectations. <laughs> you know, and Will Smith will smack the out of you if you don't get the girl. <laughs> but my point is this, is that the whole purpose of this journey is to really be yourself. Yeah. I believe that salvation, at its fullest sense, is that God wants you to be truly yourself. Amen. Right? He wants to remove all of the stuff that you caked up, whether it's sin, whether yep. it's projection, all of that. It's like, man, I want you to be yeah. truly yourself. Why? Because in Genesis it says, they were naked and unashamed. Mm. That's not, nothing to do with physicality. It's all to do with vulnerability and openness. Right. Yep. Right. Okay? Like, to be fully yourself is the greatest gift if someone can see you for fully yourself and embrace you, man, that's an awesome thing. Yeah. You know, that's why it's important to do the soul work of knowing yourself so you can yep. be true yourself yep. and not feel the pressure to try to fit mm. someone's mold. Because the saddest thing I see is when people, they don't want to mess it up, so they're going to fit this person's mold. And now uh -huh. you're settled. Yep. And now you're sad. No wonder 50% of marriages end in divorce. Because maybe from the beginning it wasn't real. Maybe we weren't really ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And then now you, you're stuck with each other. Now the reality comes. Like, yeah. man, this is not what I signed up for. Right. Listen, us pastors, we see it all the time. We, we yeah. counsel people all the time. They were like, man, if you only didn't take that step, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and open yourself up to that. Now, God can do anything. Yeah. But yes. it's like, man, don't you want to come into this thing with as much homework as possible? Yeah. I was yes. telling you, like, one of the greatest advice I ever got was from a professor in, in, in the college we went to when we started getting serious. And I asked him, I said, how did you know? He goes, you don't fully know. Mm. He said, you do your homework and then you take a step of faith. But it's like, do a lot of homework. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Get to read and know the person. So we spent a lot of time talking about the future. Mm. Right? Talk to each other. Like, there's some things that I won't compromise that I feel is serious to me that it, this is not like, do you like McDonald's or Burger King? <laughs> Yep, yep. But they're like, you should know yourself and you should write the things that you really will not compromise. Yep. I don't care how cute he is, but I have convictions. Yeah. And I'm not compromising his convictions. Because yeah. if you don't have convictions, then yep. it's like, yeah, he's cute, but you know, he doesn't really come to church. But you know what? Maybe God's calling me yep. 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 to be a missionary in my relationship yeah. to one person. <laughs> yeah. 
not to your classmates or your coworkers, no. but this one joker, which I've seen jokers come to church, tell the girls all the right things, mm -hmm. get them, and then they're out. Mm. Yeah. It was funny. As I was pursuing Brit, she brought a bunch of jokers around, and not be, and they weren't intentional. In, yeah, they I just were following her into the church. But she would basically walk them in and leave them like lost kids <laughs> in the in the lobby or whatever. And I would hunt them down, and I'd be like, "All right, you're after her. Let's talk." And I, and I wouldn't like I wouldn't be aggressive to him, but I was like I was inviting to him, and I was genuinely like, "All right, let's get you there." And in the back of my head, I'm like, "You ain't got a chance. You got at least a year or two before so you, you're even." Close. So you weren't genuine. I was. No, no, no. I was I was genuinely trying to connect them, but I'm like I don't have anything to worry about. I'm fine here. <laughs> so you were a missionary in your own way, <laughs> with with ulterior motives. Listen, you, you got to do double work sometimes, but. I want to bring it back a little bit with just some practical steps yeah. for those yep. who are struggling because maybe there are some people here who are having sex with their partner and it's tough when you pop that cap to get the lid back on and really, <laughs> no, that, once you pop you can't stop, is that how oh that's it? Oh my gosh. No. Uh, <laughs> All right, hold, hold up. You hang out with my Dior too much. <laughs> But but being able to really get that back in line, get it in a healthy place, or even just if you're someone struggling with pornography, that's like, how do I get yeah. out of there? And let, let's just identify some of those hot topics. So none of these necessarily are gender specific. So when we talk about pornography, it is not just a guy issue. We are coming into a culture and a time where pornography is so at our fingertips that it is now also becoming a female issue. So it doesn't matter if you are a guy in the room, if you're a girl in the room that struggles with that. Erotica is something else that's really prevalent. Masturbation is something that's really prevalent. And I don't want to hold back by not saying the things that are in our faces every day because God gets the final say. And I'd rather know what the word says about these things and be able to have mature conversations on them then shy away and say like well i don't want to talk to them about masturbation because like is it okay is it not okay like well what about that romantic novel is that okay like just have the conversation like god's word covers every area of life he doesn't hold back and i and i want to live my life for that yeah. you want me to go yeah <laughs> um so My story, like I said, was one of really meeting Jesus. And I do believe there was, with this with all my heart. When you meet Jesus, he permeates every area of your life. You know, um, there's no departments yeah. or compartments to this whole thing. We're mind, body, and soul, right? And so when, again, I'm talking from a biblical standpoint and from a, from a Christian standpoint, is that we're supposed to be whole, right, and holy, Right? In every aspect of my life, I've, I surrender my life to Jesus. When I say that, though, I have to ask the question is, what do you really want out of your life? Right? Until you answer that question, there's no, nothing will stop you from making mistakes and dumb moves that you don't want to make unless you really know what you want. Right? What do you really want out of life? What do you really want out of relationships? What do you really want out of your soul? Right? Because... I've always believed this. The greatest accountability partner you have is yourself. Because I don't care how many accountability partners you have. Yeah. If you're not true to yourself, if you're not honest with yourself, you can't look yourself in the mirror and, and have an honest conversation with yourself, then it doesn't matter what we say. Right. You know what I mean? You've got to answer that question. What do I really want? Yeah. You know? Because I really believe everything you want is on the other side of surrender. That's so good. Right? So at 20 years old, I constantly had to surrender my life to Jesus, and especially my sexuality, because I, I was active, you know. But I'm a living testimony that it's possible, you know, to, to be celibate for seven years and enjoy life. It wasn't like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. I think it's like if your mind's not made up, then it's like this. Ugh. But it's like, you know, so if your mind made up, like, I believe that Jesus has the best interest in mind for <laughs> me. I believe that he's got a plan for my life. I believe that... He's going to bless me, yeah. you know. And so making those decisions from that standpoint is very different from, I'm trying not to mess up. Yeah. Right. I don't want to mess up. Yeah, that's good. You know, it's like, no, that's, that's not it. That's not the, that's yeah. not the journey. Right. It's yeah. a beautiful journey. 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to live like, I don't want to sin. The more you do that, the more you're going to sin. Yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? So everything takes its right place. Masturbation now comes, you filter that through that, right? Watching movies, you filter that through that. Like, for me, it was like, man, I want to be so holy and righteous that I'm I'm old school. Like, I'm from the blockbuster days. (laughs) Go to blockbuster, look at a movie and go, why is it rated R? Like, I'm not against rated R movies, but why is this rated R? You know, because I'm not into like, Christian thing versus non-Christian. It's like, no, I'm into like, what do I want to put into my soul? That's good. You know? So for me, it's like, I want this. I want this for me. Like, I want to live right, just, you know what I mean? And I want to live according to Jesus' will for my life. I believe he has better interest in mind for me than I have even for myself. Yeah. You know? So I got to answer that question for myself because no one can do that for you. I don't care. Go ahead and list 10 (laughs) <laughs> accountability partners right, right, but right. what do you really want for yourself yeah. because then everything gets filtered to that lens yep. I don't care what it is masturbation yep. social media I've been on social media for a year I don't think about it right <laughs> you know what I mean it's yeah. like I'm trying to stay off social media it's like no like what do I want for my soul like I didn't even get off social media because I had a problem mm-hmm. here's another thing I don't live life of like, now I have a problem, I have to do something different. It's like, no, I try to be proactive about things. I just just felt like, hey, one day I was on it, I was like, eh, it'd be nice to take a break, a long break. Not like I find I had a problem. So I think this freedom in grace to be yourself. And if it's real grace, then you you embrace the boundaries. The boundaries are healthy. It's for your good. No commandment from God is for God. Right. It's for you. Like, think yep. about it. Like, God doesn't yep. benefit from yep. any commandments, yeah. but you do. Yeah. Right? When I tell my kids, go play in the backyard, I don't tell them what to play with. I just say, don't go, don't go over the fence. Right. Because I can't protect you there. Yeah. So the fences are for your own good. But play with whatever mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. here because you're free to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So was there any specific guardrails that you threw up after you came to Christ and you're like, okay, I'm staying celibate to make sure you didn't ever cross that line again? Yeah. Listen, I did some, some what I think today they would be called radical, right? But that was my story. Again, I don't like to imprint my story on anybody else's story. But if you're asking me, yeah, I did some radical stuff. Like, I loved movies, but I didn't go to movies for three years. It's my, one of my favorite pastimes, Right? I didn't, I got rid of every music that I felt was promoting sex, right? Um, I would be at home playing video games while my boys are out on the weekend. You know what I mean? Like, I made these decisions for myself. No one had to make it for me. I got, I was 20 years old. I'm an adult. You know what I mean? I could do whatever. Like, I could hide and do whatever and pretend I'm I'm the church kid. But that's not my story. My story is like Jesus is real to me. And I want to live in his will and his purpose. That's my story. Like, no one has to believe that. I just know that that's my story. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like, I did, when I said I have sex for seven years, I didn't have sex for seven years. You know? Did I have challenges? Of course. Right? Of course you have challenges. But when, you, when your mind's made up, mm-hmm. that's why the Bible, we just talked about James. James says, no one will get anything from God if they're double-minded. Mm-hmm. But when your mind's made up, man, that's something that's powerful good. about a made-up mind. Yep. Yeah, like, I made up my mind. I want, this is the life I want for me. Yeah. As for me, this is what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when we started dating, we talked a lot about boundaries. Yeah. Right? We, we would honestly have yeah. conversations about, like, hey, listen, that we feel like we were spending too much time in the basement and it might get physical. Like, let's get out of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We even went through that's a while good. where we weren't even kissing because yeah. it was like this was too much. So we stopped kissing for a long time, and we were very like, yeah. we just were honest about it. Like yeah. it was like when you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you He'll give you checkpoints. And yep. I felt like anything that anything that we did that I felt like I couldn't say in front of my parents, I'm not in it. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah. I can't say this in front of Pastor Steve or Pastor Nancy. I don't want to do it. Like, that's honestly yeah, that's how, good. that's really how I felt. Because shame wants to keep you in hiding. That's shame good. wants to isolate you. So we had to say, like, no to shame. So it's like, I'm not doing anything yep. that's going to look shady. Yeah. And that's, and we were, I mean, at that time, we were youth pastors. We were doing a ministry together. And so we had that in our heads, too. Like, accountability is a good thing. It is a good thing. Like, we say it like it's a cuss word. Like, oh, I'm going to do me. Like, this is my truth. No, like, that's <laughs> bull. Like, you... Yeah. 
you should be accountable to people. There are certain yeah. things that I wouldn't do because I thought, man, the girls in my small group, like I, I can't do this because of the girls in yeah. my small group. Like it may have been something I wanted to do in my sinful nature, but I was like, nope. And those girls held me accountable. They didn't yep. know it, but I yep. knew it because yep. I was like, I'm accountable to them and I'm accountable to yeah. God. And that is not a bad thing. Yeah. And it would be a shame for us to have the life that we have blessed. And I'll tell you the truth. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what's the greatest joy of a pastor is to see you blessed. Right. Like, your, your, your joy is I joy. When you're broken, it hurts us too. You know what I mean? That's why in this area, it's so sacred, it's so powerful that we can't stress enough just what do you really want for yourself? That's you know, so you got one life. What do you really want for yourself? And my prayer for all of you is that you, you go through life with less and less brokenness because we're all broken, yeah. right? But let's not keep making decisions to stay in the brokenness That's good. That, that creates more brokenness, yeah. right? Because when people begin to be healed, you want to have more healing. You want to have more, yeah. more of that. that. That's why, again, I keep going to the same, back to the same question. What do you really want for yourself? Yeah. Right? Validation should come from a place of wellness, mm -hmm. not I'm validating you to use you. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm validating because I care about you. Right. Like, let's say you're dating someone in church and it doesn't work out. I hope that there's validation there. Even in a breakup, there should be validation. Yeah. Not like, you know, used and abused. Right, right. Now right. I got to leave yeah. the church because I'm yep. ashamed and broken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I pray that we, we can, I think we can show the world how to do this well. Yes. Because I don't know yep. about you, but the world is desperate for something real. Yes. Yeah. So desperate that they're doing everything. Yeah. Like, I just saw an interview today of a young girl. She's 23. She's like, you know, I bought into the concept that I didn't like my body. Mm -hmm. Started doing the whole treatment of, like, you know, transitioning. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then a year later of doing those things, she realized, this is not really what I want. Right. But she's like, everything around me was telling me, this is what you want. This is what yep. you want. This is what yep. you want. And come to real, thank God she came to her senses. Yeah. I don't even think she's a believer. But, but I see the grace of God there. Amen. Yep. That she realized, this is not what I really want. Right. And now she's, a, she's a, she seems to be a happy 23-year-old yeah. girl yep. who has embraced herself, not what everybody's mm -hmm. telling her. And then when she embraced herself, now they hate it on her. Mm -hmm. She's like, now they hate it on me because I didn't go through with it. Yep, yep, yep. But that's the world for you. Yeah. The world doesn't know itself. So they'll say yes to this, and then they'll say no to it. And then they'll say yes to it again. They'll flip-flop. You know, that's why I think there's something powerful about our made-up mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want Jesus. I love Jesus. No one's making me do this. Yeah. Because this got to go beyond us telling you this. You got to want this for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I want to keep going, but we're, we're already yeah. so over. I want to. Oh, we are? Oh, we? Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, we got a babysitter, so if you want to keep going, we'll keep going. Like, we're out. We're, we're happy. We're out. We're free. <laughs> You're going to go um, see Doctor Strange after this? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> tomorrow, for sure. I got a date with my boys. That's awesome. Um, on a practical standpoint then, how would you walk out um, confronting the areas that you know are in, that you are in sin and walking into that place of freedom? So I know like you're saying know yourself, but okay, you're leaving 20 plus this night. Step one, two, and three, do this, this, and this first. I mean, I, I, that's, again, it, it's hard because you do have to know yourself and you kind of have to know your circle and like what is, what kind of works for you because everybody is different, right? Yep. So I would say like the first thing to me, always the first thing for me, always, always is like almost putting your lifestyle on some kind of a diet or some kind of a regimen, uh, like it's always social for me because you don't realize like the pe the amount of people that come in our office mm -hmm. and it's like you know it's like social media has so much to do with this like yeah. people are speaking too much into this you're talking yep. to too many people you don't know what you're doing you're just waiting for someone to give you an answer walking out of here step one I would say is to sit with yourself and say okay Jesus what is my next move and I would shut things down so that you can hear so that you can hear the Holy Spirit yeah. not because it's not a legalistic thing it's like it's hard 
if everyone in here is talking mm -hmm. at the same time and there's someone that's trying to get to me and my husband's on the other side and he's like trying to call my name but everybody is talking at the same time, I can't hear him. I can, right. I know him because I, because I'm connected to him so I'm like getting hints of him but I can't really hear that's what he's good. saying so I can't yep. quite find my way. So you all have to shut up so I can get to where I'm going. <laughs> But the only way that you can do that is you have to figure out what are the noises in my life. That's and it could, be, it could be Netflix, it could be the radio, it could yep. be this podcast or too many podcasts. I have no yep. idea what it is for you. Only you know that. So I think quieting down the voices in your life and asking God, like, who are these people that I, that can, that I want to speak into my life? And the way that you kind of filter that is like, I'm looking at your life and that's what I want my life to look, at, look mm, like. That's good. Like, I like what you're doing. I like where you are. You're, you're five, ten steps ahead of me. You're the person that I want to speak yeah. into my life. And you have to figure out who those people are. Yeah. And you pick one... I mean, I'm, I'm very... I'm, like, super neurotic about that stuff. So I have, like, one or two people that I really allow in these intimate yeah. places in my heart. Yep. And that's pretty much it. So you kind of have to, I, those to me would be the first steps. What do you think? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. The first step is detox. Right. Because it's, it's as potent as a drug addiction, yep. alcohol addiction, right? Detox is the key, right? Detox is painful, mm. right? Detoxing is disorienting. Yep. Mm. But if you stick with it, there's clarity that comes. Yep. There's peace that comes yeah. with detoxing. Yep. Now, detox looks different for everyone. Right. Whether it's if you, if, if you you know if it's masturbation, that's a detox, right? Yep. If it's just lust of the eyes, is detox, right? Whatever it is, you have to starve the flesh, mm. right? You have to starve the flesh and, and feed the spirit, right? Because they're both there, yep. right? It, it's what you feed the most yep. that's going to win in this battle, yep. right? So you have to, again, want this for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to detox because I want my mind, I want my eyes, I want my heart to be pure. I want, yeah. I want to be focused. And once you get over that detox process, I'm telling you, man, it's like there's a clarity mm. that comes. You know, there's a peace that comes. And you're able to, first of all, love yourself better because yeah. we forget that. Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. Right? Start taking care of yourself. Self-care is spiritual. Right, like we're, we're talking practically. Go to the gym. Yeah. Spend mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Right. Go to bed tired. Mm. Go okay. to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But go, but, but go tired so you can. You're just sleeping. You're not wandering. You're not. Mm. You know, trying to figure something out. Yep. It's like work out. Be active. Because here's the thing. It's so practical, but laziness is room for lust. That's right? so good. Be as active as possible, right? Be moving. Serve. Yep. Like, serve. Like, yep. Yeah. Give of yourself. Yeah. Right? Empty yourself. Yeah. Right? This age that you're in, the greatest time for you to be serving, to be investing yeah. in others. Yep. Don't waste your life with just Netflix and chill and whatever. You know, like, you have to be active, you got yeah. to be pursuing your purposes. Like, what are your passions? Mm -hmm. Pursue them. You know, like, go all in. This is the time to do it. Right? Get as many experiences as you can. Right now. Yeah. Right? Right now. Like, this is the time to do it. Don't get caught up on daydreaming. Right. And the, I don't know what's next. Yeah. You know what's next? What's in front of you? That's right. Like, do what's right in front of you, man. <laughs> like, I don't know how many times we gotta, we're going to miss this. <laughs> There's so much to do right in front of you yeah. and you're going, I don't know what's next. <laughs> yeah. You know? What's my destiny? What's my, what's destiny? my calling? Your destiny calling is what's is in right front here. of you. <laughs> like That's do good. what's right in front of you. I never heard God say you're gonna be a pastor. I'm still waiting for that. Right, right, right. I just kept doing what was in front of me. Yep. And yeah. and I kept getting more responsibilities. I kept getting more responsibility. Next thing you know, oh wow, I'm a pastor. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why that happened. I'll tell you what happened. I kept doing what's right in front of me. Yeah. Right. You know, just do what's right in front of you and stop daydreaming. You know, and please kill the whole like social influence thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nonsense. Yeah. Okay, you're an influencer because you have influence, period. Yeah. You know, so that, that's, that's my process, yeah. you know. But you got to answer that question. What do I really want for myself? That's so good. That's awesome. 
Um, so 20 plus doesn't leave here, right? So take what they're saying, the practical steps that they're giving you, but also go to the altar on Sunday. That is like the best place you can be. Get to church on Sunday, go to the altar because it is distraction free zone. Like there's a prayer team that's praying specifically for us at that place. Um, and meet God there. God will God will answer when when you're calling to him. Listen, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. Probably from twenty to twenty five, I don't I don't think I ever spent a Sunday without being at the altar. Wow. Wow. Just if it's open, I'm there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because again, another wrong concept. I do something wrong, I gotta go to the altar. No. I yes. just want to be yes. at the altar. Yep. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like, it's my favorite time of service. It's like, I, I, it breaks my heart. A lot of people don't take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Like, just sit still with Jesus yeah. for 20, 30 minutes. And secret, Yeah. the altar gets better later. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, later. Yep. Some people just get the appetizer. <laughs> Steak around, you get the full meal. Like, yeah. if yeah. you can stay around 20, 30 minutes, that's when it gets good because the Holy Spirit is like, we got all the shallow people out of the way. <laughs> I got something good for you. Yeah. Amen. That's my secret to you. I'm telling you, stick yeah. around 20, 30 minutes. Wait, wait, yep. linger. Yep. Yep. You get that's the good so stuff. Good. Amen. Amen. So, with that, Pastor Lindsay, would you mind praying for us? Oh, I'd love to. So, Lord, we thank you so much for this night, God. I thank you for this space to to learn and to grow and to really hear your truth in a safe setting, Father. I pray that you would bless and anoint every single person that's in this room, God. I pray that now, as even as we're praying, God, that you're starting to bring up these things that need to be addressed in their lives and in their hearts, Lord. I pray that you would empower them to go forward, Lord. I pray that you would put the right people in their life, God, that even now they're thinking like, okay, I, I this person can help me and that maybe that person can help me and that you would give them the strength to to quiet down their lives, to quiet down the noise, and to really zero in on what it is that you have for them in this season, God. I pray that you would strengthen them to put their hand to the plow right now, God, not to wait for the next, not to wait for the big thing that's coming, God, but to be faithful in their house if they're living at home with their parents, faithful in doing the dishes, faithful in talking to their parents, faithful in in all of those things, God, because that's where you are, God. That's where you are, Lord. And so, God, we pray We pray for every single person in this room, God. We pray for purity, God, a purity of heart, purity of mind, God. Um, And we we bless them, God. We love you so much, and we know that you go before us, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Love you guys. We actually have something for you both, yes. Um, Adelaide, do you want to grab that for us? So the 20-plus community kind of got together and put together a date night basket for you. Oh, fun. (laughs) Which includes child care. No way. Yeah, we love child care. We love child care. You had me at child care. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, Thank you, guys. And we hope that the night is set up well so that you can have great sex after. Oh, wow. (laughs) Wow, there it is. That was quite the mic drop. Shout out to Mike Diorio. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, guys. This was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.